Welcome back to Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Last time, we saved some prisoners from a horrible fate at the swamp. Thankfully, that chapter is really annoying, but anyway... This time we're going to see the fruits of our efforts. Micaiah and her small band of fighters knowingly walk into a trap to save condemned Dayan prisoners. Even without the benefit of Izuka's vast information network, news of Micaiah's heroism in Shifu Swamp spreads like wildfire across Dayan. The once hopeless citizens of Dayan dub her the Priestess of Dawn and find their spirits restored. In their troubled hearts, they see in her nothing less than the promise of salvation. Throughout day in, the people rise as one against the brutality of their oppressors. Benyon's occupying forces cannot deal with open war on so many fronts. General Jared redeploys his men to key locations to better defend the capital city. Jared's forces still outnumber those of the Dayan Liberators, and he has hardened his defenses in hopes of holding off Micaiah's army. The Liberation forces fight with a fury not to be denied, however, and the Occupation Army begins to lose its will to fight. Breaking through enemy lines again and again, Micaiah's forces gain vital ground and momentum. Despite the anger Micaiah feels toward Izuka for his treatment of their Lagu's allies, she continues to lead the army in its lightning-quick advance. Navasa is now mere days away. So we're approaching the end of this war. And the end of part one. This chapter title is a little interesting though. Cutting straight to this music. I like this song. It sounds like it should be a preparations theme, but it's actually cutscene music. Well, we already knew that from earlier. But that's very, very good news for us. Once they see what the army's doing, there'll be no denying what's been going on here. That's even better! So, the war is over! Of course, given that there's still a chapter here, and that we're not at endgame yet, because every part does have its own endgame, you should be a bit suspicious. And yes, in Radiant Dawn, Sephiroth is consistently referred to as Duke Persis, so that is not mistranslated. You didn't meet him for very long, though. Though admittedly, Tormod had been operating in Bednion freeing slaves for quite a while, he probably had heard of him. Well, you see, my availability in this game is non-existent, so I can't do anything. Actually, though, there's another reason why Tormod is saying this. I think that's very, very sane. Everyone should think like you now. Meanwhile, back in Villain Land. I think we saw a similar kind of generic Bednion um, messenger in Path of Radiance during base conversations. And this is this same um, background that we did to Kalil and Nephany's sea support in back in Path of Radiance. So we don't actually have to fight these guys, hopefully, if only it were that easy. As I said in the last part, I still really like this, just how the Senators are cunning enough to throw the Occupation Army under the bus to save their own skins. Okay. 
Well, I mean, it's not exactly framing when you did do most of them. Still. As much as I'd like that, they're not going to do it that way. And yeah, there's something even darker at foot here. The Senate's probably going to want them all executed. Just to cover things up. Yep, Jared's like, if I'm going down, I'm taking Micaiah with me. So, things aren't quite over for us. There's a TV trope called Last Villain Stand. Sometimes nothing is more dangerous than a villain who knows they're doomed. Oh no, it's you again. I hope that you get to the point where you know you're doomed soon. Yes, shut up and never appear again. Again, everything seems fine, but... Obviously, we know that something else is afoot. Now, in the base, we'll see something weird the moment that we go into items. We only have access to Micaiah's inventory in this chapter, though we still have access to the convoy. So anything in the convoy, Micaiah can use. Though anything that's not in the convoy, i.e. that was on other characters, we don't have access to. I might as well grab a vulnerary, even though there is going to be a droppable vulnerary during this chapter. As always, we still have bargains, and holy crap do we have a lot of bargains. I don't recommend buying this statue frag, though it's pretty much useless. Here's another master seal in case you didn't find some as hidden treasure. Arm scroll, these are all really expensive. Shine is an A-ranked tome now, and it has a decent crit rate, but um... Also, this description is a little ironic, because there are enemy light magic users who will be using Shine. There's also another Wind Edge, but for the first time I might not want to buy a Wind Edge, I already have a lot of them. So do I have anything to sell? I can only sell directly out of the convoy because, yeah. This really doesn't serve much purpose except for selling because plus two luck is not going to do much in the long run. I might want to trade that to the next party though. Definitely don't want to sell my keys and I might want to save the gem for the next party as well. The arm scroll I might hoard for, um, definitely don't sell these scope. I might hoard this for, um, later just in case I need it. And for supports, we only have access to Micaiah, and yeah, she can't support with anyone else here. I guess I should do the info conversations now. Yeah, I get the feeling that she's probably busy, um, the first thing that came to my head is doing like a signing or something. Because Izuka doesn't want you to? I'm not jealous, I just envy her, because that's totally different. It's not quite over. They wouldn't be giving us this much gold if, um... If we didn't have more to go. I kind of like that last line from off there, but another 10,000 gold. More screen time for Jill is always a good thing, so I appreciate this base conversation. Her armor is kind of interesting looking uh, in her artwork. It looks more like her promoted armor, at least from the last game. Yes, J Jill has a very good point here, as you'll soon see. This chapter comes about by Micaiah not really being the smartest. <laughs> that 
that's kind of a good way to sum up salt in general. And that's also a good way to sum him up in general. And famous last words once again. The Wyvern delivery service was mentioned in Jill and Ha's supports from Path of Radiance, I'm pretty sure. So yet more evidence of every support in that game being canon to Radiant Dawn. If it wasn't obvious before, it should be obvious now who she's talking about. Although, him having gone to Bednyon and never returning is not a good sign, considering what's going on in Bednyon right now. And yes, now it's really, really obvious who Jill's talking about. If you've played the last game, that is. Yes, he's certainly very interesting. So we get a skill scroll from this conversation. So at the moment we only have access to Micaiah for skills, but this is pass. You probably know what this is if you played Heroes or I'm pretty sure it's in Awakening. In fact I have to remove Paragon just to show what this, what this skill does. Pass lets you move through enemies. It's going to be very important in the next chapter. For now, though, I kind of want to keep Paragon on Micaiah. Even though she might not really get that much chance to use it. So, um... So, at this point, we can only manage Micaiah. And I might actually want to give her a level up or two with bonus experience, even though it's going to cost me a bit. Only because I did a test run of this chapter, and she actually got doubled by some of the enemies here. I really, really don't want that. So I'm, I doubt she'll gain speed here, thought so. But, now that she's cat magic and resistance... She cannot gain speed! Good. <sighs> and capping resistance is not going to be very useful in this chapter. So yeah, these stats are pretty typical of Micaiah. As I said back in her bio, she's not really the strongest of characters. Yeah. But, I guess keeping Paragon on her for now is probably alright, although... Hmm. Yeah, I think this should be fine for the moment. And I'm going to be doing both the base and the actual chapter in the same part, because this is not a very long base and not a very long chapter. Something I forgot to say earlier is that Veronica Taylor actually mispronounces Yune as Yoon in her Heroes dialogue, but that's actually how it's pronounced in the Japanese version. Uh, if you listen to the Japanese version of the first cutscene, she says Yunnu, not Yune. So, I don't know, maybe um, this game's pronunciation was the one that was wrong. And yes, idiot's ball is a kind of an apt term here because that describes a TV trope that Micaiah has fallen under for this chapter. Because she decided to take a nap out in the middle of nowhere, and of course she gets ambushed. That's actually quite a good line though. So, we only have Micaiah, we have a map here, with a few very weak level 1 soldiers, and Jarrod. Yeah. I don't think Micaiah is going to do a very good job of fighting this guy. He also has a Steel Great Lance, which hits very hard, and he definitely one-shots her, and is doubling. 
Also critical plus five. This really doesn't look good. Makaya having map affinity here is not going to help. You know, in some ways, I feel like killing her and creating a martyr might make them fight even harder, though. Maybe you haven't heard, when someone dies in a situation where it's impossible to find the body, in fiction, they're usually alive. That's kind of an ironic line, considering uh, the previous game, though Micaiah has no idea who this guy is. So, you are seeing this right. You're not hallucinating. We actually have a playable Black Knight. And he's even stronger than he was in the previous game. Curious as to who I am. You're better off not knowing. Or perhaps, even asking. So yeah, playable Black Knights. It's just as broken as you probably think. I said Nyla was the first of two I win buttons you get at the end of part one, the Black Knight is the second. I've rearranged this bio a little bit because the Black Knight doesn't have growth rates. He already starts out camped. But really, does he need growth rates? His base stats at this point are complete overkill. He'll one round every enemy, especially since Alondite has 1 to 2 range. He'll never die, and even if he does take damage, he heals 18 per turn with Imbue. And he also has access to his mastery skill, and wait a minute. Calling this skill enemy instantly dies would be a massive understatement. Eclipse is one of the most hilariously stupid abilities in all of video games, in terms of how much overkill it is. It inflicts five times damage, and ignores the enemy's defense entirely. Literally nothing in the game can survive this, not even the final boss. Heck, it's been shown that even Mist with Eclipse could one-shot the final boss. Not that that's really relevant though. So, the Black Knight has a couple of major drawbacks. The first is that being already camped, any kills he gets are wasted experience, and the Dawn Brigade still really, really needs experience going into Path 3. Because of this, it's best to treat him like Nyla. Only have him kill something if you have no other choice. Except, unlike Nyla, the Black Knight can be unequipped and uses an unarmed meat shield. But for the Black Knight, this is an even bigger problem than it is for Nyla. As you can probably tell, due to the Black Knight being kind of a major villain of the duology, he's not going to be playable forever, let's just say. So whatever you do, don't give him any stat boosters, and make sure that any items he finds are traded away from him. Because he will leave forever at one point. I'll be sure to warn you when he does, for now I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil anything. For 1-9 though, have fun abusing him to your heart's content. This chapter makes for great stress relief. If you can keep Micaiah protected, that is. 
So this is a very strange chapter. If we go here, and yeah, notice how the Black Knight is listed as independent. He's not actually part of Makai's army. And also, um... <laughs> yeah. Um, Black Knight dies. Good luck getting that to happen. He does have a unique death quote in this chapter, but none of the enemies can hurt him. So, um, yeah. Also, this is a Fog of War map. It's technically our first Fog of War chapter, but... It's not really, like, it's very different to your average Fog of War chapter, so I'll cover how Fog of War wo works in more detail in the next one we're in. Something else kind of unique about this chapter... So, that is a quick gameplay hand wave to prevent the fact that rescuing Micaiah would make it impossible to fail this chapter. So, yeah, sadly, the developers realised that you could easily finish this chapter that way and decided to, um, make it so that it's impossible. So, this chapter mainly exists to get Makaya to level 20 before her forced promotion in the next chapter. We also have a talk dialogue here. And Makaya can still fight from behind these forests, and from behind the Black Knight being a living shield. It's a defeat boss chapter, but you have to kill a few of the regular enemies here before the boss even spawns. The Black Knight won't even move. Because watch this. Yes, he still has his battle theme. Obviously, he doesn't get experience, though, so any experience he gets is effectively wasted. Doesn't really matter, though, seeing as Mikai is so close to being level capped. Come on, Eclipse. Please, Eclipse. Uh, I want to see at least one Eclipse here. Because Eclipse is just downright stupid in how powerful it is. And reinforcements. But as you can see here, that guy has a javelin. So, you do want to be very careful where Makaya goes in this chapter. In fact, I can't actually kill both of you with the Black Knight this turn. Who has a better chance of hitting Makaya? You double, which is unfortunate. And do you also double? No, you don't. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to kill the one who doubles. Yes, a Londite can still attack at range. Its sword beam animation looks even cooler. Now, the last time I played this chapter when I was on hard mode, I actually kind of had problems here because eventually um, I just couldn't find the boss and I kept running around in circles trying in vain to find where the boss was. That's kind of an annoying thing about Fog of War sometimes. Now, I really hope there is not a second enemy in the dark with the ranged weapon. Ow. There is one enemy here that will drop a vulnerability. And that little pause there meant there were some reinforcements spawning in a place I can't see. Alright then. As much as I would really like to do that... I think I actually need to do this. Because after we kill a certain number of enemies, Jared will appear. It's just so amazing hearing this song actually on your side. Okay, I will need to retrieve that from the Black Knight eventually. You can probably guess why. Please dodge that. Thank you. I think I actually have a somewhat speed-screwed Micaiah, so this chapter is a bit of a problem for me. And thank you for suiciding yourself. Sadly, I can't activate Eclipse at range. I said before that no mastery skills can activate at range in this game, except for, you know, the mastery skills of mages and archers. Admittedly, that was the case for the Black Knight Moon in the last game. Okay, so this is about the point where you start to have to play hide and seek with the enemies. And this is a particularly dangerous game of hide-and-seek, where losing means Micaiah dies. So... yeah. Whatever you do, you really don't want Micaiah to... Hi there, enemies! 
you really don't want Makaya to end up running into Jared. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's an annoying thing about, um... Not being able to attack with the Black Knight after moving. Because you can reach Makaya, and if you hit both your attacks, and she's in worse fire rhythm, because of course she would be. Yeah. I really don't want to fail this chapter because it's actually pretty easy if you do it right, but I've got a very speed screwed Makaya. Please eclipse, that would be amazing. No, just eclipse. It's, I still love how you just sends them flying, though. Now the moment of truth. Makaya has to dodge at least one of these attacks. Well, first this guy attacks. The AI loves to save the person who will actually game over you for last. There's Eclipse! Ha! Huh, that soul didn't even move at all. That's bizarre. Okay then. Well, at least I can get a little bit of cheap experience here. I think Jared does spawn from this corner eventually, but I forget exactly where he spawns. It's after you kill a certain number of enemies. Okay, good. I'm pretty sure Makai will only be able to get attacked by one thing. If I move the Black Knight here, even fewer things should be able to get to her. You keep attacking him and the results are always the same. Okay, then, a few more enemies. I don't know why you're not moving. I really hope this doesn't turn into the same kind of hide-and-seek situation did. Okay, so now I can safely just have Makaya run away and have the Black Knight kill everything. Still no speed, which is not good. Because now once... <laughs> yes, you do that. Now once Jared appears, the Black Knight can just attack him and it's over. Okay, a fighter. As I said, I really don't want this to turn into hide-and-seek again. Because in my previous playthrough, I was just running around and around in circles trying to find Jared. But as I said, I'm pretty sure he spawns from this corner. Okay then. Right. Ah, didn't see. Stupid vision range. Well, this javelin guy is officially an idiot. Please get a clip to your trouble. Well, you got critted. And goodbye. We'll be seeing some mastery skills do that later in the game. I always love the animations that just make the enemy go flying. But for the most part, this chapter's kind of stress relief. I will certainly take that after... Actually, no, this is even more damage because it's ignoring their defense, so it's even more than 42. More enemies. Let me just quickly check this. So yeah, 56 attack power, uh, that's times 5, so it's like 250 plus 6 times 5, which is 30, so uh, yeah, that's like 280 damage, guaranteed. That's a lot of damage, as you can probably tell. Was 
was hoping you'd do that too. You've made your point, Jared. You can stop sacrificing random people to the Black Knight now. Come on, show yourself. Well, he hasn't shown himself yet. Let's just really hope that I don't end up running around in circles again. Um, hello, fighter. So yeah, that's uh, typical of Fog of War chapters. If you run into an enemy while moving, you will be stopped. And, uh, hi, soldier. Where is Jaron? How much more will the Black Knight get to display his brokenness? More, I see. So you just took 280 damage. Which I think is more than the maximum possible damage in Sacred Stones at the very least. Uh, where are you? That one time I ended up running around in circles, it turned out that Jared spawned back here. The Black Knight still does not have very much movement, especially through thickets and things like that. He's not there. Where are you? I'd kind of rather go this way, just so that I can keep an eye on Micaiah. Don't want any, uh, any enemy jumping out of the blue and attacking her. But unfortunately, the terrain here is very annoying. Where is he? Well, there's a coin here. I think that's the only treasure in this chapter, though I could be wrong. Is he in this corner? Oh, there are a couple of soldiers. Oh no, if you guys die and then Jared spawns right from where Micaiah is, that would be really terrible. Please don't let that happen. Well, Jared didn't spawn there, at least. I'm desperately hoping that Micaiah is safe there. he is. Yep, so Jared does eventually spawn in that corner, so it's a good thing Micaiah started to run out of it. So the Black Knight needs to get back to her quickly. Thankfully, the terrible terrain is going to work in my advantage here. I'm pretty sure Jared doesn't move either, so now I just have to get the Black Knight back over to where Jared is. There he is. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't move. Nakai does have special boss dialogue with him, though. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to show that. Without... I don't know, like if I put the Black Knight here. There might be a way that I can... I mean, my turn count is being awful at this point, but... I just want to show this boss conversation. Here we go. Don't need to use Fanny. So, pretty generic villain dialogue for now. And no special boss theme for Jarrod here. He does have a unique model though. Well, at least a unique power. And now let's just stop with the formalities. Please Eclipse, that would be amazing. <laughs> know your place. Come on Eclipse. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Fool! Also, 
that Know Your Place line is actually a meme in the Japanese community, which is often said regarding Soth, which is kind of weird. Oh, so the one that did 280 damage to him won't be his head. Okay then. Plot armor, the only thing stronger than Eclipse. I just find it kind of silly how Makaira is saying stop at both of you like she's breaking up a fight between squabbling children. And so Jared leaves to fight another day thanks to one of his men performing a dual guard before dual guarding existed. So yeah, Alda, turned out Alda was kind of interesting. You never got to fight him. Despite having a name and having a unique portrait, he was never a boss. He ended up dying in a cutscene here. But why did the Black Knight come to save her? Oh no. It's the arch enemy of the father of my children! Yes, he escaped a collapsing castle somehow. Admittedly, he does have warping capabilities. I would say insight check him, but I feel like the Black Knight would have a ridiculously high deception modifier, so... Yep, he is still alive. Another case of Micaiah actually making mistakes. Makaya's foresight power is starting to fail now. That definitely is explained later, but um, that's major spoilers. No, we don't want the help of someone who has a broken 1-2 range weapon, ridiculous stats, and has a skill that just instantly kills everything up to and including the final boss. Someone this strong is willing to help us, I mean, we won't turn it down. And it does seem like it's fate that we met you here. Of course, most people who are in Path of Radiance would not like seeing this guy back. But, that's that chapter over. 2,000 bows experience just for clearing it. So with that, next time it will be part one endgame for the real final confrontation with Jared. So see you then.